Okay, so this video is for pages 15 through 17, and I'm going to assume that in class you jerk out at least through pages 15 and 16, so we're on the top of page 17, which talks about the midpoint formula. So you should remember from your other algebra classes that to find the midpoint, you are, in essence, finding the average between two points. So to find an average, you add those two things together and divide by 2. So to find the x part of the ordered pair, we add the x's together and divide by 2. And similarly, to find the y part of the ordered pair, we would add the two y's together and divide by 2. This is your midpoint formula. So now, on the first example of page 17, it says find the midpoint between, and you have an ordered pair, 6.4, comma, 3, and your other ordered pair is negative 10.7, comma, 4. So we're just going to use what the formula says to do, and we're going to add our two x's together and divide by 2. And we're going to add our two y's together and divide by 2. So when you add the 6.4 plus negative 10.7, don't forget the negative, and divide by 2, you're going to get negative 2.15. And then 3 plus 4 is 7, divided by 2 is 3.5. So your ordered pair is negative... 2.15 comma three and a half. So the next problem is a little bit different only because it gives you the midpoint, it tells you the midpoint is negative two comma 2.5 and then it wants you to find the value of P and P is an ordered pair P comma two and your other ordered pair is negative one three. So to find the value of P so that this negative two, two and a half is our midpoint, all we really care about is the X values right now because P is an X value. So if you were to set up the formula, you're going to have p plus negative 1 divided by 2, and that's going to have to equal my negative 2 piece. And now it's just simply a linear equation that I'm solving. Multiply by the 2, add the 1 over, so the value of p has to equal negative 3. So just this, because something sounds tricky or different doesn't mean that it is by any sort of the imagination. So our next problem or set of problems is about circles. So I've written the generic form of a circle for you. And you should remember that H and K are the center. And we always have minus signs right here in the middle. So if it says plus, then the H or the K value would be a negative. And that at the end down here you have your radius squared. So the first example says write an equation with a center. So I'm going to write down C for center. And my center is negative 1, 2. And then it says on the circle I also have a point of 3, 4. Okay, so this is a little bit trickier. Um, it's only a little bit tricky because I need to find the radius, and the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. Well, luckily enough for us, I have the center and a point on the circle, so I'm going to use my distance formula. And I'm going to do my x1 minus my x2 squared plus my y1 minus my y2 squared. So that's going to get me... Negative 4 squared is going to be a 16, plus 2 squared is going to be a 4, so I have a distance of the square root of 20, or 2 root 5 if we want to rationalize it, and that's my radius. So now, x, it's going to be minus, but this negative 1 here, negative negative is going to make a positive, so x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals my radius squared. So you can go use your 2 root 5 and square it, or the square root of 20 squared is simply 20. So the last example wants us to find the equation of a line that is tangent to the circle from our last problem that I've written down again, and it's tangent at the point 3, 4. So I just want to draw a quick picture. So I have the circle, the center of negative 1, 2. And then I'm going to have the circle, and at the point 3, 4, I'm 
I'm going to be tangent. So what tangent means is if this is how my circle is going like this. Tangent means I'm only going to touch at one point. And I apologize for my lack of ability to draw in the iPad. But I'm just going to touch only at this point right here. Three, four. Well, the beauty of this problem is that I know the center. So if I can find the slope of this blue line, which is my radii, then lines that are perpendicular of opposite reciprocal slopes. So again, we know that our center is at negative 1, 2. So if I'm going to find the slope between these two lines, I'm just going to use my slope formula. So I'm going to do y2, so 4, minus y1, which is 2 over 3, minus negative 1, which is going to get me 2 over 4. So the m, or the slope of my blue line, is 1 half, which means my m nu, the slope of my perpendicular tangent line, is going to be negative 2. So now I have y equals negative 2, x plus b, and you can go through and do all the math to find your y-intercept, but since this problem doesn't tell me what way or what version to write the line in, I'm going to use point slope. So I know that's my slope, and I have the point 3, 4. So let's make our lives as easy as possible. I'm going to do y minus 4 equals negative 2, x minus 3. And there's the equation of a line that is tangent to my circle at the point 3, 4.